Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. It's time to paint your house and you go down to the home improvement store, walk in the paint aisle, and you're gonna get supplies, including tape to mask off areas, and you encounter this kind and this blue kind, and then you see this newcomer called Frog Tape. And when you compare the prices, oh, this is about two to three dollars a roll, this is about three to four, and this is almost eight. Is the Frog Tape worth it? Stick around and you'll find out. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. All tapes are not created equal. For years, you've seen this regular craft type paper tape. It served many of us very well for a long time. Uh, one of the big things about this is it dries out pretty quickly when it's in use, but also just sitting on the shelf or in the drawer ready to be used. This one you're also familiar with, this blue tape that was introduced by 3M and Scotch. Uh, this is become really mostly our go-to tape around here, and we use it for all our masking. Uh, in the maker shop, it's really a great tape, and it can stay on the job a little bit longer before it dries out, and it tears off real cleanly when it comes time to remove it in most cases. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. Now, this is the newcomer, the frog tape, and the frog tape is significantly more expensive, but what it does is pretty doggone impressive. I asked a professional painter, a friend of mine named Kenny, who owns his own, own painting company, is frog tape worth it? And he says, you betcha it's worth it. In uh, some of the applications where the tape's gonna be on for a while, or it's very critical that paint not leak under the edge and there's a very clean edge where it's not convenient for them just to hand cut, this is his go-to tape and feels it's a real labor saver. Whatever he spends on the tape itself translates to labor saving on the other side and it's a real bargain as far as he's concerned. So what makes this tape different? Well, number one, the adhesive on it is a polymer type of adhesive. And so it stays on the job longer um, and doesn't dry out as fast. Also, when it's applied to a surface and pressed down, it kind of really seals the edge tightly so that you get very little leakage under the edge. Now, don't take my word for it. We're actually gonna put these to work here on a sample piece of drywall that's been painted to simulate the wall inside of your house, just standard semi-gloss paint. And we're gonna apply all three tapes and then paint over it and then see what the results are. All right, as we go to apply these three tapes, it should be noted that the enemy of any tape is sunshine, where there's direct heat, UV, that dries out the adhesive, makes the paper brittle. And the more expensive the tape, the longer it can take those conditions, but you don't wanna leave a lot of tape just out in the sun or out in the elements for a long time. You're courting trouble when it comes time to tear that tape off. On these kind of tapes, it'll probably just fall into shreds and you'll end up really spending a lot of time scraping it off or using something like goof off to get it off. And you would just really, this is a false economy if you've done that. So all of these, also dry out over a period of time. And notice that frog tape actually provides a storage container that you can put this tape in when you're done that prolongs its life and keeps it adhesive, moist, and ready to go. All right, for our test, what we're gonna do is just take this 24 by 24 piece of drywall that's been painted, primed and painted, actually it was a combo primer paint, and we're gonna put two strips of each of the tapes uh, on this so that we have multiple tests to make sure that we don't have a one-off problem with any one of them. So I'm putting these tapes here, I'm just finger pressing that on. There's that one. Let's go ahead and use our blue tape now. We'll move it more out here in the middle. Now we have these three tapes. Now I'm gonna differentiate this a little bit more because even um, inexpensive tapes can be helped a bit by a couple practices. Number one, up here, I'm just gonna use hand pressure and do like that, okay? But down here about halfway and down, let's just say like right there and down, I'm gonna take a putty knife and smooth those down. 
like that. Now, the rougher the surface, the more you need to press in the tape to cut off the edge. But I'm just gonna do that on each of these to see if we get any difference between the top half and the bottom half when we paint all over this. Before we actually roll paint on this, I wanna point out one other practice you can do that can actually jump up the performance of any tape. Let's suppose just for uh, sake of argument or demonstration that this is a wall in your house. Here's a piece of casing or trim that goes around your door. And what you're wanting to do is lay tape right alongside it like that, okay? Or over on this one, a little harder to see. And you've masked that right along the edge like that. One thing you can do to jump up the performance is use a latex caulk like this. Uh, this happens to be just um, DAP's Alex brand. Put a very small bead of caulk right along the edge where you're trying to trim. Use a wet finger, either with water or off your tongue, and then you're just gonna smooth that in and create this little gullet of a very thin wipe coat. You don't want a bead showing up, it's just a very thin wipe coat. Let it dry, do your painting on the trim down to this, and then when it's time to pull the tape, pull the tape back at a 45 and down away and tear a nice clean line. And you can get some better performance with whatever tape you're using if you're having a problem right along a molding edge. All right, let's continue with our test here. We now have these three different types, a double tape in each one. Let's go ahead and roll some paint over the top of this and let it dry and come back and see our results. Okay, we've now coated these uh, strips of tape here. Uh, we're gonna let this dry several hours, then we'll come back and pull the tapes, and I'm gonna show you a technique of pulling the tape for better results. Let's see what we get. Okay, we're back. It's been about four hours. This paint has had plenty of opportunity to dry well, and uh, we put this in the same order we did before. This is our regular paper tape. Here's our blue tape on this side. Here is the frog tape. And we used uh, a, just a coating of other latex dark paint to see the results that we get. Now I'm gonna pull this back, but I wanna give you a tip when we do this. This is another thing that pros know about, and that is when you pull tape, you do not pull straight away or perpendicular or at a high angle to the wall. So let's put this up here and show you. If this was on the wall, you do not pull straight out this way. That's courting trouble. Many times it'll pull the substrate off or pull some of the paint that's stuck to it. Whenever you pull, you pull at a low angle, down like this or at an angle and pull. And that way you're breaking away the adhesive right at the surface right there instead of pulling off or pulling the substrate down below. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that. You can see I gotta keep that angle and then there we have a clean removal of that tape. Let's do it again. Here we go, down low, and right there, there was a nick. So you can see that didn't pull off real cleanly. So here we go. We're gonna pull down low again at an angle. And you can see right away, this is the craft paper tape. No, we didn't sabotage this and nick the corners. This is just straight off the roll. And by the way, it's a brand new roll. So it's not as strong. So there we go. That are the two stripes pulled. And remember, the top half, we simply put our fingers and wiped it down. Look at the leak back that you see along the corners. Notice the bottom half where I used the putty knife blade and burnished the tape, much cleaner. So that's just something to take away right away that you saw firsthand. Now let's go to the second one. This is the blue tape. And we did it two columns just to double check our results. Again, we're gonna go down here. Well, this was just hand pressed on. We're pulling down at that hard angle. And again, you have better results at the bottom where we use the putty knife and burnished it. Look how clean these lines are compared to where you have a little bit of leak back occurring. And let's just double check and see, do we have the same thing? Here's leak back from me just hand burnishing it. 
about the halfway point, we went to the putty knife burnish. And again, you can see the results are pretty doggone nice. All right, now let's see if we get a substantial difference. I'm gonna learn something with you right now as we do this. Let's go ahead and pull this off. This was just where we burnished it by hand on the top. Notice though that it definitely is cleaner than these over here where we just uh, did the hand wipe on it. Let's see what it gets when we get to the bottom. Well, now we're getting some really clean lines. Uh, wow, that is impressive. Let's go over here to the same thing, just see if we get a consistent result. Top half, a little bit of bleed back showing right in this area here. Let's get to the bottom half and see what we get. Well, that is pretty dog, doggone clear uh, that there is a difference. And I'll tell you what you can't see on camera is this tape has a more substantial feel to it, certainly than the craft paper and even a little bit more than the blue tape. Well, if it's results you're after and you don't want to do a bunch of double work, I'd say there's a difference with the frog tape with that specialty adhesive and the heavier construction of the paper that they're using. Not bad at all. You know, something else that you may want to learn how to do is to use spray paint well. Check out this video where we show you how to get great results using spray finishes and spray paint. And then check out this other video down here also that we produced just for you and YouTubers presenting for your enjoyment. Hey, thanks for joining me today in the shop. This is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.